Scarborough Fair Parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme Remember me to one who lives there She once was a true love Tell her to make me a cannabis shirt in the deep forest green. Parsley, sage, rosemary, and balance no crystal flower. Without no seed or leaves and words, the child of a mountain, she'll be a true love of sleep's Strands and polishes of gun, she'll be a true love of mine. Yellow is the color of my true love's hair in the morning when we rise in the morning. When we rise, that's the time, that's the time I love the best. Blue's the color of the sky in the morning. When we rise, in the morning. When we rise, that's the time, that's the time. I love the best Green's the color of the sparkling corn In the morning When we rise In the morning When we rise That's the time That's the time I love the best The feeling that I get when I see her, mm -hmm. when I see her, uh huh. That's the time, that's the time I love the best.
keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure love. Am I more than just the sum of every heart? again just who I am because I need to know You'll have every failure, God. You'll have every victory. Ooh, you say I am in love when I can't feel a thing. I can only imagine. What it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine I can only imagine When that day comes And I find myself Standing in the sun I can only imagine When all I will do Is forever Forever worship you only imagine, yeah. I can only. 
only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel Will I dance for you, Jesus Or in all of you be still Will I stand in your presence Or to my knees will I Well, that was cool. Thank you, Alvin, for putting that together. <clears throat> One of the songs that were played early, early on, I had a flashback to when Ken and Becky got married, and me and my brother Charlie were hiding behind the church piano with a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder <laughs> playing Scarborough Fair. <laughs> I had the flashback, so yeah, it's good. Welcome. Thank you, everybody. This looks like a friendly crowd today. Of course you are. It's good to have everybody here. <clears throat> There's people who are going to be watching online. We're recording the service and we'll be posting it on our YouTube account as well. And so uh, we just want to send our love to you guys and express our thanks on behalf of the family for all of the love and the kind words, the prayers, tributes to a wonderful person. My big sis, this is a difficult day for us. But for Becky, not so much. <laughs> uh, she liked to talk about people doing their happy dance. And I, I just imagine she's doing a happy dance today in celebration of a life well lived and a reward in the presence of Jesus and, and uh, loved ones who have gone before. It's just, it's kind of cool to think about those things, isn't it? People who have gone before and the reuniting of, of lives in, in, a, in a perfect environment. Whew, that's cool. One day, right? I was thinking about all the people she's reunited, reunited with, her dad and her brother, obviously, and grandmother, and so many. She did a lot of research on family trees. I mean, Becky was just a research junkie. She just loved getting in there and digging things up uh, in so many good ways. And uh, sometimes, sometimes says Sister Mabel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I was just thinking, you know, maybe some of the people she's meeting are, are people that she did research on from our family tree way back into who knows when. Awesome. Paul, the apostle. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> oh, those are cool thoughts. Revelation 14, 13 said, Blessed are those who die in the master from now on. How blessed to die that way. Yes, says the Spirit. And blessed rest from their hard, hard work. None of what they've done is wasted. God blesses them for it all in the end. I want to ask you to join me in a prayer. <clears throat> As I was preparing, preparing for the service today. I just felt, he felt prompted by the Holy Spirit that he wanted to heal some hearts. It's been a tough year, hasn't it? I mean, one thing on top of the other with all the drama politically and unrest in our society and viruses going around, lost loved ones. 
I just felt like God wanted to minister a, a rest and a peace to our hearts. If you would, just place your hand upon your heart as we pray. Holy Spirit, come. We call upon you, Lord. We need you. We pray that you would come in your strength as only you can, Lord. I pray that you would come and strengthen us for the days ahead. I pray that you would come and heal us when we feel that we're at the end of our rope. I pray that, Lord, you would come and give us hope that endures. I pray that you would heal us from the pain of the past and that, Lord, you would establish us in such a way that, Lord, we're not shaken. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, Lord. You're not shaken. You're always in a good mood. You're beautiful. Let your beauty be lifted up upon the countenance of your people. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we commit this service Thanking you so much for Becky and who she is. Thanking you, Lord, for the great work that you did in her life. She was amazing so much because of you, Lord. And we give you the glory and the praise for that. And we pray that, Lord, you would continue to minister to our hearts and uh, speak to us through this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. Do you have the song, View This Holy City? Singing never get tired one of these days. 
these days, one of these days. You know that I'm gonna do that holy thing. Oh, I'm gonna do that holy thing. What I see, I'm gonna do that holy thing. I'm gonna do that holy thing. And I will sing and never get tired. We're gonna sing and never get tired. And we will sing and never get tired. Oh, we're gonna sing and never get tired. One of these days. One of these Test. Uh -huh. <laughs> I need to get a little louder. Imagine you're 17 years old in a new state, at a new school, in a new culture, surveying the hallways, looking at the cafeteria, and a voice rises up to you. Hi. You don't know that just 18 inches below is the love of your life, your partner and companion, your lover and friend for the next 53 years. And because you're tall, you could have overlooked her. You might never have seen her, but her Irish beauty, her Irish pluck, her Irish strength, had the courage and gumption to say, hi. <laughs> to beckon you out of the clouds into the real world, to turn your head from the abstract to intimate relationship. That's the first thing you need to know about Becky Kennard. Becky and I were not like one another. I was water and air. She was earth and fire. But fire needs air to burn. Earth needs water to grow, water needs earth to hold it together, and air needs fire for substance and power. And that's what we became. The Beckenards. A combination of different elements, sometimes conflicting, sometimes aligning. And we, because we knew that these forces combined with our pledge to value one another, to be faithful to one another, and to respect one another, made up a creative and lasting whole that could face, enjoy, and cope with the big bad world. Now, I don't think she ever would have said this, but Becky's lifelong passion and commitment was to help others look good, be good, and do their best. And the Beckon Arts became free whose strands could not be broken. Becky gave birth to Joshua on the longest day of the year, and I'll tell you, it was a long day for, for her. But there was Joshua bursting with energy and curiosity, strength, drive, and creativity. He was like us, but he was not like us. And so she committed herself to helping him be his best in his unique way. She helped him look good. She helped him think good. She helped him love good. And she did it until the day she died. For many years, Becky was a customer. She'd spend 100 to hours a week making clothes for a whole cast of people, making garments that looked right, looked good, and fit well. Why? She did it so that those people could do their job with freedom and confidence. 
lives so that those people could speak and sing and dance their best without distraction. Becky banished the bathrobe and the smock from church productions. Colors, fabrics, hats, scarves, belts, all with quality. She'd say, you look fabulous. Go do your best and change the hearts. For many years, Becky was a photographic and digital artist, but unlike Indiana Jones, her work did not belong in a museum. It belonged in the real world, with real people doing real things. Somebody, a family member, a friend, a pastor, a teacher has an idea what to do. She can find pictures, find artwork, make artwork, find colors, and put them together. Join them with quality and precision that those folks could never imagine. And the small seed of an idea or impulse became a full-blown bouquet. She looked at a family, generations of love and activity and success and tragedy. Find the pictures, research the heritage, build a calendar, capture eternity, and let it please and motivate that family. For so many years, Becky was a therapist. Many great souls suffer as prisoners of physical and psychological barriers that can find great gifts, great aspirations, and great potential. Through research and study, through thought and development, Becky found a way to dissolve the shackles that tear down the walls, release the gifts in children and parents and the injured and the impaired. She cleared away roadblocks and traffic jams of dyslexia, ADD, brain injury, and emotional frustration. The great souls, whether they were two or 92, bound up in those chains, were released to be all that they could be, to look good and to be good. And for eternity, Becky prayed, and she prayed, and she prayed some more. She prayed the scripture. She prayed from her heart. She prayed the prayers that she meditated on and wrote down. And she prayed in the tongues of the Spirit. She prayed for people. She prayed for pastors. She prayed for churches. And she prayed for cities. She prayed in her bed, in her chair, in her congregation, and on conference calls. She prayed for positive things. Release, awareness, growth, celebration and she prayed as part of the body of Christ knowing that it was the body of believers working together in the spirit that would bring the victory and here today that chorus of witnesses a beautiful performance of solid families of children who found their potentials of pastors who rose up in security of the injured who came back of the insecure who found security proclaim that Becky Kennard was their foundation, their companion, and the person at their side. And so we celebrate her life, and we carry forward the life that she gave us. <laughs> and we look forward to the next time she says, hi. Howdy. Thanks for being here. Um, my mother's passing was on a, on a pretty interesting day. It was on New Year's, um, so there might be some references, New Year's Eve, so there might be some references to explosions in the sky if you're wondering why I'm talking about that. Um, this is what I wrote the next day. I want to write something she'd be proud of. Last night at the forefront of a new beginning, I lost my mother. Last night, while a peaceful winter calm coupled itself with explosions and shooting stars, I stood there, thinking about the warrior of a woman that was and is my mother. Faith radiates not only from her, but from her memory. I think about how, 
how many people she gave new beginnings to, including me. When she spoke, she spoke with authority, with kindness, with honor. I laughed a crazy laugh that night, thinking about the mountains of goodness that she built. And I cry in awe of that goodness. The painting of a life that she made was just so beautiful. But wait, there's more. Oh, what a laugh that woman had. Oh, what courage she had. Oh, what brilliance and wonder. She counseled so many. She prayed through life with so many. She did her best to heal entire cities. I want to write something that she'd be proud of. And I think she'd want me to do that with my actions, not just my pen. She speaks through me right now when I hug someone in need. She speaks through me when I tell people they're amazing. My mother, I will remember at new beginnings just like today. My mother speaks in my ear right now and she says, do not be afraid, Joshua. She would tell me to carry on the good work, to tear down the walls like Joshua at Jericho. She would tell me God is nigh, just like we texted each other every night. She would tell me, if I was with you, I'd hug your neck. She'd tell me to scratch my kitty's ears for her. And I'm thankful to call her my blood, my mother, my counselor, my comrade, my friend, my inspiration, and a lot of times the glue holding me together. I could scream at God in the air and the unsuspecting birds flying by to deal with such a loss. But that's not what my mother would have me do. She would have me celebrate knowing her. She would have me dance and rejoice about the goodness in the world. She would be proud to see me carry on the good work with hope and inspiration, a fearless inspiration, a new beginning of faith in God. She would tell me, live a life worth rejoicing for. She called my house a house of celebration. So that's what I'm called to do. Celebrate a woman who lived a life worth remembering, worth honoring, worth building up enough courage to live a new beginning and help others live new beginnings too. I love you, Mom, your good and faithful son, Joshua. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Josh. She'd be proud of you. She is proud. Ken, that was so great. Man, I don't, I don't know how people just capture things. <laughs> you know, there are, there are many gifts that God just gives. And uh, I think we just witnessed some wonderful gifts. Uh, yeah, giving us. I, you know, you're talking about her, Becky's laugh. And uh, she, did, she had a one. I was talking with Bill a little bit earlier. Her, her laugh was one volume, loud. <laughs> it didn't matter where she was, in a restaurant or at a movie theater or in church probably. Uh, if some, she, something tickled her heart, she, everybody would turn around. <laughs> Why not? I want to read uh, something that was sent <clears throat> from Greg and Mabel's boss from General Air, and uh, he writes with tiny letters, so I'm using my glasses. Um, he was just reaching out to the family and showing his condolences, but he said something about a prayer warrior, reading Becky's obituary that reflected who she was and how she prayed. It says the Bible's prayer warrior spiritual gift God wants every Christian to pray. However, this gift given by the Holy Spirit transforms the Christian into a prayer warrior. To this end, prayer warriors intercede before God for the welfare of other people and ministries. So how did prayer warriors earn this label and when does it appear in the Bible? Bible teachings on prayer depict some forms of prayer as standing in the gap, in war between good and evil. Sadly, this spiritual gift is often overlooked by the church. This is because prayer, a prayer warrior's gift is seldom used in public. However, 
without prayer warriors, many visible ministry accomplishments would likely not succeed. Thank you, Brad Armstrong. Also want to read a tribute from Becky's pastor, Pastor Jim Tomberlin, wrote these words. And like I said, so many people have written some amazing things. And we thank you for all those. But this helps us to see a different side of, of Becky, maybe than what you knew personally. Um, <clears throat> remembering Becky Kennard, ever since her untimely home going on December 31st, 2020, I have been reflecting on the life and influence of my dear friend Becky Kennard. She had a profound impact upon my life, my ministry, and my family over three decades. I was her pastor for nearly 10 years at Woodman Valley Chapel in Colorado Springs in the 1990s. She felt a calling to be my prayer intercessor. And not just for me, but for the church and my whole family. God did many wonderful things through my years at Woodman Valley, and I'm convinced that it was largely because of the fervent prayers of this woman. As the scripture says, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And John Wesley affirmed, God does nothing except a response to a believing prayer. Every pastor and church is fortunate to have a dedicated prayer intercessor. I was, Be I was blessed to have Becky as mine. Becky's friendship and prayers followed me to Chicago when I was called to Willow Creek Community Church to pioneer a multi-site model that God had birthed in my heart in Colorado. She was a strategic level prayer warrior who prayed for my ministry of launching multiple congregations all across Chicago land. Vicariously, Chicago became her city. She moved mountains, tore down strongholds, and with her power, powerful, scripture-saturated prayers, she gave me air cover as I labored on the ground. She was a vital part of our team in Chicago from afar. Her fingerprints and tears are all over the map of Chicago land. Her intercession continued for the last 15 years as I moved into the unknown ter territory of consulting churches in multi-site merger and succession strategies. I was proudly called, I was proud to call Becky my personal intercessor, but she was more than that. Be Becky had a gift of discernment and healing. She brought health to me and countless others physically, mentally, emotionally, as well as spiritually with her whole holistic approach to health. Becky was life-giving, selfless, and generous individual who leaves a big hole in our hearts for all of us who knew her. We will miss her twinkling eyes and infectious laughter. But I take comfort that she's sw swept into the arms of Jesus with a well done, good, and faithful servant. Farewell for now, good friend. Becky was. <clears throat> And her prayers live on. That's the beautiful thing about prayers, is they remain in the heart of God. The Bible talks about bowls that are filled up with prayers that are tipped out at God's discretion at just the right time. She's a big part of that. She had such a heart. It's amazing to see her work with people. You know, we talked about how she, she ministered therapy to people who had dyslexia and people who had brain injuries and so forth, or even just one of the family, that she, when she did that, she would light up, literally. She had this little sparker in her hand. She's going to get you connected. She's going to spark you on these touch points. And then she, she would sit on the edge of her seat, and you would just see this, this grace come over her. And she would, she would pray, and she would speak things, and then she would wait a second, and it was just a, to me, it was astounding, just a beautiful reflection of how she partnered with the Holy Spirit, who's, he, who, who, who's out of his love heals us. And she would 
partner with him to be a vessel of, of his healing in people's lives. And then she would speak life over people and have them speak life over themselves. That's a good thing, you guys. That's a good thing. I always admire Becky. You know, I've been pastoring for 25, 30 years. But every time I got with her, I talked to her about what the Lord's been telling me. Uh, she would just take it to another level. <laughs> she would start to unfold it in, in ways that uh, it really humiliated me. No. <laughs> I just, uh, I just knew I was out of my league there. But we all have different gifts, right? She was such a researcher. She, she was well-versed. I'll miss her big smile, her big sister love, her laugh, her passion, her scrappy attitude, such courage, strength. She was such a fighter. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 was a scripture that she learned to employ with such artistry and skill. Listen to this. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petition and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. Wow. Thank you for playing this next song, Angelo. Most beautiful, most beautiful. Most beautiful. Most beautiful Everything changes I'm captivated I'll never be the same With just one look Everything changes I'm captivated I'll never be the same One thing I desire Only this I see Is to dwell, dwell, dwell Here forever This will be my passion Laying at your feet just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. Dearest Father, closest friend, most beautiful, most beautiful. Dearest Father, his friend most beautiful most beautiful one thing I desire only this I see just to dwell 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 here forever this will be my posture or oh, laying at your feet Just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever Dearest Father, closest friend Most beautiful, most beautiful, most beautiful most beautiful I fix my eyes on you You're beautiful So beautiful I'm 
so in love with you You're beautiful You're beautiful I fix my eyes on you You're beautiful So beautiful I'm so in love with you Just one away. I just want to dwell. I just want to wait. I just want to dwell. I just want to wait. I just want to dwell in who you are. I just want to wait on you, my God. I just want to dwell in who you are. Just one move. Everything changes. I'm captivated. I'll never be the same with just one move. Everything changes. I'm captivated. I'll never be the same. Everything changes because of Jesus. You know, this service is for us. Like he's, she's with him. But I think there's some thoughts that we can, we can lean upon today that will help us. And I want to just take a few moments to express some of those thoughts that have been laid upon my heart you know, Moses had his own encounter with God, and he probably couldn't explain it to anybody adequately. That's kind of what you felt in that song, right? Somebody who had been before God. And, uh, you know, what, what we see when we, when we see him, when we go to heaven, what will we say? But beautiful. He is so Good. And so amazing. And he gives us a taste of who he is out of his goodness. And we know the story of Moses, how God met him on the backside of the wilderness and, and showed up in a burning bush. And we read the words that are said, but there's something riveting that uh, happened to Moses that just transformed him from who he was to, to who he would be as a person. And I want to read the last words that Moses, a man who had been touched by God, who had encountered God, a man who had many failures, all the earthy stuff that you and I go through. The words that he wanted to pass on to another generation that were coming after him. And some of Moses' last words here in Deuteronomy 33. And he says, there is no one like the God of Jeshurun. Jeshurun is kind of a pet name for God's people, Israel. There is no one like the God of his people. 
There's no one like the God of Joshua. There's no one like the God of David, Elvin, Sandra. There's no one like the God, like your God. Your God, my God. He says there is no one like the God of Jeshurun who rides across the heavens to help you and on the clouds in his majesty. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. What a beautiful picture. How God rides on the heavens to help us and underneath are the everlasting arms. Well, you know the story of Moses. His life was not so easy. And we can, we can bear witness to that because life is not easy. And we have our struggles and we have th- things that people fail us. We fail ourselves, absolutely. But think of Moses who was in over his head and had the weight of the responsibility of leading the people of God out of bondage. The burdens that he expresses. I mean, at one point, Moses is just telling God, I want to check out. I'm, I'm done with this. He was at the end of himself. But his last words did not reflect that. His last words reflected something that was beyond that. And I hope we can catch that today. That life is more than the pain that you felt. Life is more than the injustice. Life is more than the struggle. And if we have been kissed by God's glory, then we have something else to talk about and something else to pass on to another generation. His, reflecting, his reflection was on the overarching care of God who was a refuge for us all. The God who comes to our help to help those with problems and in need. He says he's the God who rides on the heavens to our help. He's covering us from above. You know, Moses, his journey was not very easy as well. He walked on the hot sand. Here there were vipers, there were scorpions about. His journey was not very hard. He not only had to deal with the emotional things that he carried and the burden, the weight of responsibility that he carried, but he also had to deal with the elements that were around him the things that, were, that made the journey difficult. But his eyes were not upon those things. He says, underneath, friends, are the everlasting arms. So we can live with a confidence. A new generation can have their own encounter with God, an experience of a God who not only overshadows us, but undergirds us as well. <laughs> there's, there's such a sense of his everlasting arms under us today in this sweet presence that's in this sanctuary as we've gathered together. Moses says, lift up your eyes to see him. That God doesn't just send help, he gives himself to help. Isn't that what he did with Jesus? He bankrupt heaven to help us. At one point, Moses said, show me your glory, Lord. And God said back to him, my goodness, you will see, will pass before you. The glory, the presence of an indescribable God is described as goodness. Pretty deep, deep goodness. Becky's journey among us has ended But for us, the rest of our journeys remain. It's kind of a daunting thought, isn't it? What will 2021 be like? (laughs) We're thinking maybe changing the calendar is going to change things. Come on. I'm not sure it works that way, you guys. I've got a few years under my belt. I'm not sure that things are going that way. But I do know God is strong and he's good. And I do know that he's with us and he, and he loves us with an everlasting love. It's a daunting thought to go on. And all I would say is don't do life without Jesus. Don't go on without him. Jesus did for us what we could not do for ourselves. Call out to him in your hour of need. Cry out to him. 
He rides across the heavens to help you. He did so when he became a man and he, he was tempted in all things like we are, but yet without sin and un, unjustly pinned to a cross and his innocent blood atoned for all the wrong and the sin so we could have confidence with God. He rose from the dead triumph, triumphant over sin and death itself. But his death and resurrection were not for himself, it was for us so that we could know resurrection as we cry out to him and receive the gift of Jesus Christ, his gift of eternal life. All I can say, beloved, cry out to him. There's no one like your God. And I want to say to you as well, be bold and courageous. Live strong. Let's take time to serve. Let's leave a mark, however simple or small. This is the legacy. You can't be Becky. She was herself uniquely. Be who you are uniquely. Someone said, live out loud. Becky, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. I'm going to ask Corlea and Wayne Keeney to come and sing. Our son Mason is joining us too. <laughs> um, and if you know the words to this song, we invite you to join us. And is this playing? We're, we're voting for a not a cappella rendition. So <laughs> let's. <laughs> to worship 
So good, you guys. Thank you. Let's all stand together. Thank you, Father. Thank you for all these beautiful people, Lord. We pray that you would grace us uh, with your strength that we need, Father God, in this very moment. Father, we thank you for Becky's life, who she was to us, the memories that live on, the heritage that that shall be carried out. Thank you, Father, for breathing fresh uh, wind upon the coals that have been set to fire in Jesus' name. Now give us strength, Lord. We draw from you, Lord, the hope that helps us to face a new day with courage and with dignity. We welcome you into our hearts and lives. Thank you for your comfort. Thank you for healing Josh and Ken and helping them through the the days that lie ahead. For mom, we bless you, mom. Bless you in Jesus' name. Lord, just give her strength. Help us all, Lord. We commit this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen.